Welcome back. Casual with a capital C is the new word in the U.S. Senate. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has instructed the Senate Sergeant at Arms, the person in charge of enforcing all the rules of the Senate, to no longer give a dressing down to senators for how they are dressed. The move may come as music to the ears of Senator John Fetterman. He's known for his more casual style, you could say, since his days as Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania. Not everyone in the Senate, though, is ready to, let's say, swap out their dress shoes for sneakers. Most, if not all, Republican senators think we ought to dress up to go to work. And um, so I can't imagine that we're going to be uh, wearing jeans on the uh, Senate floor anytime soon. The House is going to do on Bermuda shorts, just go for it, right? Let's unbutton this a bit tonight. Jane Campbell, president of the U.S. Capitol Historical Society, former Senate chief of staff to, I think it was Mary Landrew. So, Ms. Campbell, you know all about this. You've been in the chamber hour after hour, year after year. I mean, staff, they have to get special walk-on privileges to sit in that, you know, corners in the back. And I don't know if they're going to be able to dress how they want. Did you ever think this day would come in the United oh, no. States no, no. Senate? Staff? Well, I mean, staff is still got very clear boundaries. Um, and, you know, look at this. Think about it, the context here. The senators are elected by the people of a state, um, and they answer to the people from their, from their state, where the staff answers to the institution. And so every staff member will still have to abide by the dress code, which is quite strict. Um, and the interesting thing is, if you look at the history, the Senate dress code has never been written down. It is huh. an understood situation, um, oh. whereas the House actually has a written dress code. But the Senate, uh -huh. this, these are our norms. This is what is expected. Um, and there's been some change in the last little bit. Um, in about 1993, when we had uh, a few more women senators, they finally were able to allow women to wear pants. That was not until mm -hmm. 1993. Barbara Mikulski. I yes. know. She talked about it. And, I, I mean, went to her orientation. It. She and did then, every year with the new female senators. Um, by the way, Susan Collins joked, I could wear a bikini tomorrow. Did, uh, Really? Could could Susan Collins wear a bikini? <laughs> She's an elected member of the Senate. Now, I think that the senators are going to still wear professional gear because mm -hmm. they honor that job and they're going to answer to their constituents. And if they come on the floor looking ridiculous, um, that's not going to play well back at home. I mean, right now, uh, if senators are involved in something else and they have to run back for a vote or they just flew in, they'll stand in the cloakroom, lean out and wave um, mm -hmm. so that you don't see that they're not fully professionally dressed. Mm -hmm. it, it kind of shocks me. I was only a, a House assistant. I was never in the United States Senate like you were, but it shocks me that this came about because maybe one or two senators want to wear hoodies or jean jackets or, you know, magenta wigs or whatever. Uh, any members that stick in your memory from your years in the Senate? Well, let me tell you this. I mean, I think this is sort of, to a great extent, a big distraction because hmm. the Senate has been reliably passing bipartisan appropriations measures. And what's important that the Senate should be doing is funding the government, which they're actually doing. And so now we're talking about what they may or may not wear and who makes the rules. And honestly, I think they're going to continue to wear uh, professional clothes. I think it's a matter of the sergeant at arms has a lot to do. They're focusing on what the senators are wearing is hardly the most mm -hmm. important thing of the day. Which. I mean, a lot of the scrutiny has fallen on female senators. Um, you know, Kirsten Sinema has taken flag. Yes. Um, you know, you've been an elected official yourself, first and only female mayor of Cleveland, I believe. So, I mean, you've held elected office. But let me just have a counterpoint here, though, Mayor. Does it diminish the prestige of the institution when you have people walking around, you know, in cutoffs? I mean, if I go to Goldman Sachs and the employees 
are wearing something they got off, you know, out of the, the bargain bin t-shirt. It kind of takes the shine off the institution. Well, let me tell you this. I mean, I think what takes the shine off the institution is the fact that we can't fund the government and people feel like it's dysfunctional. <laughs> I know, but... And no matter what they wear, if they can't do their job, that is the issue at hand. And honestly, I don't, I don't think this is the most pressing issue of the day. Um, I, and I think it's interesting to me that, you know, for many years, we focused on what women wear. Are, do they wear pants? Do they have open toed shoes? Are their shoulders showing? And now for the first time, there's a focus on what some guys are going to wear. And are yeah. they going to wear? Are they going to wear suits? Are they going to wear hoodies? And it becomes a national emergency. Um, I mean, <laughs> okay. let's focus on what it is we have to do. We have a job I know, to do. I know. Although I think any good chief of staff would tell their their senator, "Should I shave my head? No, you should not shave your head. It's a distraction." So I mean. Looks matter. I was going to finish by you asking you who's the best dressed in the Senate, but maybe you don't want to answer that question. <laughs> you know, I think actually the Senate looks very, very well dressed. Um, okay. You know, I mean, you have some outliers. People look a little strange on different days. Um, but <laughs> in the main, the Senate dresses with decorum and the staff right. will continue to dress with decorum and that will and chiefs of staff will say, please dress with the decorum. <laughs> Jane Campbell, president of the U.S. Capitol Historical Society. I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. If you've got pets, you know they love to be naughty. Up next, we're going to reveal the finalists for the most unusual pet insurance claims of the year. And by the way, they're all OK. It's after this.